A hush of quiet reverence. Visitors speak in whispers at the newly reopened Hunterian Museum, part of the Royal College of Surgeons of England. Multiple human body parts, along with human fetuses, from days old to full term, are all on display. Part of a collection amassed by the pioneering 18th century anatomist and surgeon, John Hunter. As museums around the world come to terms with their colonial pasts, the Hunterian Museum is open about its own ethical questions. It's asking visitors not to take photos of the human remains. Many would have been the products of grave robbers who supplied the bodies they dug up to medical schools. There's some extremely sensitive and, and sad um, stories behind many of the things you'll see. So we want people to still respect that, that these are human remains, and we'd like to, to um, make sure that as many people as possible can see and experience the, the museum, but not to exploit it. While some may find these exhibits rather gruesome, this lays the groundwork for modern medicine. John Hunter was a pioneer in many fields, including human fertility treatment. Of course nobody would condone you know, taking bodies from graves or whatever, but actually what we've learned from that also has, we have, we have been the beneficiaries of that and huge breakthroughs in understanding the human body and then the application of surgery. Among the highlights we can show, the Evelyn tables from the 17th century, the oldest surviving examples of human tissue, blood vessels and nerves pasted onto wooden boards. A collection of human teeth, in the 1760s, Hunter worked as a dentist when it was common for the poor to sell their teeth to the rich. And this far more recent addition, a failing human heart, which belonged to a 22-year-old woman who had a successful transplant. The museum also takes visitors on a journey from Hunter's work to today's high-tech surgery. I teach anatomy in the United States, um, and so it was nice to come and see a real specimen from uh, the different things that I teach. Normally we just use models. The um, fetuses were really disturbing, um, but also really crazy of, you know, the different stages and, you know, reasons why they preserved it. A visit here is not for the faint-hearted, but the museum is hopeful that the spirit of John Hunter will inspire. I hope that they take away partly sort of John Hunter's own philosophy that he, he talked about when he, when he was a boy he asked questions about what nobody knew or cared anything about and I think if we keep doing that then we might come up with some answers and, and, and actually be exploring solutions to some of the major, major uh, problems facing the world particularly in the environment and in nature and John Hunter realised that human beings are just part of the natural world they're not apart from it Catherine Drew, CGTN, London.